So, you want to learn how to do the split and slide effect using Blender. But, you want to do it inside of a sequencer. Well, good news. There's a quick and easy way to go in about it, and I'm about to show you how. What's up world, and welcome to Next Tux Entertainment. My name is Jonathan, and I'll be your host for this Blender tutorial series. As you just saw in the intro, today I'll be showing you how to do the split and slide effect inside of Blender using the video sequencer editor. So let's get right to it. To accomplish this effect, you're going to need two add-ons. One of them is kind of optional, which is the VSC quick functions, but it makes it a whole lot easier to control this, mostly thanks to the quick tags. Now the essential add-on that you will need is the VSC transform tool. I'll have a link to both of these down in the description below. There is also a new version of the VSC transform tool, I'll have a link to it down in the description as well. Alright, now once you have these two and that you have them enabled, you can go to editing and switch your new F-curve default interpolation to linear instead of Bayesian. This will avoid any offset between your separator and your mask. I'll go ahead and save my settings and exit out of the user preferences. So I have my strips or footage, or rather in this case image sequences, set up in the order that I would want to have them. So this one is the primary one, and if I hide it, you have this one under it right here. So I'll unhide this, and I'll start by creating the different assets needed to make the split and slide. So I'll hold down shift, press A, go down to effect strip, and add a color strip. Then I'll press N to get this menu over here, and make sure to set the blend mode to alpha over so that it admits transparency. Once I'm done with that, I'll move this up to a different channel, so I'll say 9. Then I'll duplicate my color strip, place it above the previous one, and down here in effect strip, I'll switch this to white. I'll turn on image offset and image crop. Then I'll crop this by half, so since my composition is 1080 on the Y axis, which is up and down, I'll go ahead and type in 1080 slash 2, which will divide it by 2, thus making it half of my comp. Once I'm done with that, I'll go ahead and duplicate this white strip here and move it above. Then I'll change this to red so you see what's happening. Now in order to make this a simple bar, I'll crop it even more. So in this case, I'll say 1072 for example. Don't worry about this being too thin for now, we're going to scale it up in a moment. So now in order to place it at the middle of my composition, the same value that you enter for the top crop, simply enter it in the image offset. So in my case it would be 1072, then divided by 2 by putting a slash 2 and there you go. Now it's at the middle of our comp. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and group my white and black strips together. So I'll hold down shift, select both of them, press ctrl G to group. And before I go any further, I'll change the length of both of these so that they can go over our frame range. So in my case it's 443, so in length I'll switch this to 443. And I'll do the same for the red strip here, so 443, all right. Then I'll select my meta strip, hit T on the keyboard, and it will create this transform strip thanks to the sequencer transform tool. Then I'll switch the name of it to split mask. I'll do the same thing for this red bar, but before I do, I'll switch it back to white. So put these to one, hit T on the keyboard, and I'll rename this to split bar. Okay, this is where the quick tags comes in. So I'll select both of these, so I'll select my split mask, hold down shift, select the split bar, and in quick tags I'll call this split control. Press enter, then hit the plus sign, and now this tag up here has been associated to both of these. So every time you want to select both of these strips, simply click on the split control, and you'll have both of them selected. Now in order to see what's happening under the mask, which you can hide by the way, but just so we can see what's happening, I'll go ahead and lower the opacity of it to 0.5 and now we can see what's happening under. And again, if you click on split control, both of them get selected. So by placing my mouse cursor over the preview area and hitting R on my keyboard, I can now rotate the mask. But as you can notice, the mask doesn't cover the entire composition. Well, that's not a problem actually. This is where the next step comes in. I'll go back down to effect strip and I'll change the scale of my split mask. On the X, I'll set it to 2. And on the Y, I'll set it to 5. And I'll do the same thing for my split bar, but if you'd like to make it any smaller, you can either click on this color strip and change these features, whatever you enter here, for example, 1075. Simply enter it up here in the image offset, so 1075, and divide it by 2, and it will place this separator right in the middle 
of our composition or rather the middle of the mask thus dividing it in two so now if i click on split control to select both of these and rotate as you can see it covers our entire comp even if i move them around all the way here it covers our comp entirely if i hold down alt and press r and g it will reset the rotation and the location but make sure not to press alt and s otherwise you will reset the scale of your mask and your split bar so let me zoom out here in the preview area and if i right click this is the size of our new comp all right once i'm done with that we have our tag created to select both of these strips we can proceed to applying this mask to the strip or to whichever strip that we'd like to apply it to but before you do so i'll select my top strip here since this is the one that will be i'll be applying the mask to and make sure to set the blend mode to alpha over so that it admits transparency once you're done with that go to modifiers add strip modifier and add a mask leave it the strip and then you can simply type the name of your strip in my case it has the word mask in it press enter and there you have it now since there is nothing underneath this strip this is simply set to alpha so if i move my time cursor here you can see what's happening under it also i would like to note that when you for example if i were to rotate this 90 degrees move it a bit to the side here i simply press g and x to lock it on the x axis blender doesn't automatically update it in the preview area so all you have to do is simply press refresh sequencer and there you have it now it's updated i can actually shrink down the size of this split bar here going back to split setting this to 1077 and i'll simply write 1077 divided by 2 and it's back at the center now as for your pivot point right now i have my pivot point set to median point you can change it by clicking on these two balls here or down here and the two ones that you're going to want to use are median point and 2D cursor. The 2D cursor, simply hold down control and right click wherever you'd like to place it. For this sort of effect, you'll typically want to place it at the corners, I suppose, of where your split bar is. And then you can rotate from that point. Again, remember that Blender won't automatically update the sequencer when you're moving the mask around. Unless you hit refresh sequencer. Now, it won't be the same once you set keyframes. And I'll show you this in a moment. All right, now you might have noticed that in the clip I just showed you that this white bar slides in and then moves down. To do this, all I had to do is identify where I want the white bar to be in the scene. So I'll first select where it's going to be in. So right when I start moving my finger here, yeah, right around here. So I'll select both of them. Make sure to set your pivot point to medium point. I'll grab, lock it on the Y axis, move this up to this point. Then I'll hit I on my keyboard and I'll keyframe the location. Then one frame before that, I'm going to move my mask. So I'll select the mask individually and I'll move it up. The reason for that is I'll show you if I go here where I have nothing underneath it. Since there's nothing under this strip, let me hide the mask here. It is set to alpha because the black part of the mask is right up here. So I'll press up on my keyboard to go to where I set the keyframe and I'll move one frame before, grab my mask and I'll move it up and keyframe it. So now when you go to the beginning, if I hit refresh sequencer, as you can see, this is now visible. So now to have this whiteboard slide in, it's pretty much the same thing. I'll identify where I want it to start, come in. So I'll say around here, why not? And then I'll select the split bar individually, press G to grab, X to lock it on the X axis, and I'll move it out of frame. Then I'll press I and keyframe the location. Now if I scrub through my timeline, it comes in a bit fast. And if you want to change the timing of this, all you have to do, drag this out. Let me collapse the properties window here. Drag this out and switch over to the dope sheet. And now for ease of use, I would recommend checking on this mouse cursor here, which is only include channels relating to the selected objects and data. And as you can see, all we see now is the keyframes for the split bar. So I'll find my keyframes and I'll move this further back so that the white bar takes a little longer to slide into frame. I'm okay with that a bit fast still so just move it back to whatever point you want to set it to refresh sequencer just in case and let's see yep there we go much better
Then I can collapse this again, open up my menu here so I have this quick tag and it's pretty much the same process for the whole thing. So I'll just identify where the mask has to stay still, keyframe it, make sure to click on split control to have both of them selected, keyframe the location, identify where I want the mask to stop, which I'll say right about here. Then I'll just grab Y to lock it on the Y axis, move it down, I, keyframe it, refresh sequencer to see what's going on, and there you have it. Now I can hide the mask. You don't need the mask to be visible actually to do this, but if you want to see what's happening, if there's any offset in the movement of the mask and the bar, you can just leave it on and then turn it off after. Make sure to turn it off after. And since I set the new F curve default to linear, this avoids any form of ease in and ease out that might offset the white bar from the mask. And if ever that occurs, if ever you have an offset between the white bar and the mask, check your keyframes in the dope sheet. And if nothing's wrong over there, you can always go to the graph editor, press A to deselect, A to select all, V on your keyboard and set these to vector. And it should remove any offset between the white bar and the mask. So if ever you're getting an offset, make sure to set the scale of both the split mask and the split bar to the same values. This also avoids any offsets. So setting your default new F curves to linear and setting the scale values of both the split mask and split bar to the same values are the best ways of avoiding any offset between your mask and your split bar when setting up keyframes. Now here by this point, after I get up and leave, the mask turn and flip. So I simply have to click on split control or on the keyboard, and this is a 180 flip, so I'll just type in 180, enter, I, and I'll keyframe the location rotation. Now if I move back, refresh sequencer, then around here, I'll reset this, so I'll press Alt R, and then I'll keyframe the location rotation, and now when I move forward, simply refresh sequencer, the mass now flips. Now in order to have this right here slip in from under, I'll go ahead and select it, press T on my keyboard to create this transform strip. I'll scale it back up. So the mass is a bit too thick, so I'll go ahead and make it to 0.3. Click on split control, and there you have it. It's as simple as that. Now you can simply keyframe this to slide in. So if I grab this and move it to the side, make sure to set the blend mode to alpha over. And now we can see what's under it. You can move it to the side, press I on the keyboard, keyframe the location. So now I can simply press Alt G to move it back, I'll scale it up a bit, and keyframe the location. And there you have it. If I refresh sequencer, this slides in. So as you can see, this is a very simple and easy to achieve effect. You can even invert the mask simply by selecting the mask individually. Go to modifiers, add a curves modifier, and simply turn the blacks to whites and the whites to black. And if you refresh sequencer, it flips. Now your mask is inverted. You can even grab this, move it up, duplicate this transform strip, rename it to, let's say, split mask inverted, leave the curves for this one and remove it for this one. I can apply now this mask to this strip, so I'll go to mask, inverted, and even if I were to place this above this strip, only half of it shows. And the best part about this is when you click on split control, all three of these are now going to be selected. So if I were to move this mask around, refresh sequencer, it affects all three of these. Pretty neat. So, that's it for today. If you like what you saw or learned anything new, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, well, there's a thumbs down option, but who clicks on that? Anyhow, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell button so that you get notifications when I release new videos. Again, thank you for watching. My name is Jonathan. This is Nuxux Entertainment, and I'll see you next time.
Oh, also, I have a couple of other Blender tutorials if you're interested in learning new things about Blender and how to use it for video editing. Tips and tricks all the way. Make sure to check it out. I'll have links somewhere here on the page in front of you. You can just click, 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 or click. And I'll see you next time.